A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. If you need a website or a domain, go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off your first purchase. Uh, last week, I got an email from my accountant, uh, which always scares me. And she said, James, can you confirm this is what you spent on camera gear last year? And I knew it was gonna be a lot, and I knew it was a lot, because I switched to Sony in the past year. And not just that, I've kind of switched bodies within that, and I've also swapped around lenses, and it's been an expensive process. But yeah, seeing the number written down, I mean, I let out a noise that I usually reserve for uh, when I see a spider in my bed. Anyway, yes, when I saw that email, I said, right, enough. I don't need any more camera gear for a long time. Uh, the Sony a7R that I've got, the Sony a7 that I've got, those two cameras, there's no reason that they should last me any less than three, four, five trips around the sun. Uh, the lenses that I've got, they should last me at least a decade. So for the foreseeable future, camera gear wise, I'm good. I don't need to spend any more money on cameras. Um, in other unrelated news, here's my new camera. waiting for someone to walk in this this light well that doesn't usually happen to wait about 30 seconds then it's only the third person I've seen all morning so this is a Ricoh GR3X I think and basically, you might remember a few months back, by the way, those photos were from a trip to Chester yesterday. It's about 40 minutes from my house, lovely Roman city, and the weather was wonderful. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to, to go and test out my new camera. Uh, but yeah, you might remember a few months ago, I made a video where I was testing uh, two different cameras that I thought might work as travel cameras, which is to say cameras that I can just carry around with me everywhere, stick in a pocket, and just be useful for the times where I don't want to carry around a massive camera system. And so yeah, I tried a Fuji uh, X100, and I also tried my Sony a7C with a tiny little prime attached to it. And I really liked those cameras, I did, but I don't think either of those was exactly what I was looking for, primarily because they're not pocketable. And it's much the same problem with my Lumix GX1, my 10, 11 year old Lumix GX1 that uh, I was talking about the other week. You just need a pretty big pocket to stick that in. And so basically my search had come to an end and I'd seen that some of you had commented talking about the Ricoh GR, but I didn't think that this was any smaller than those cameras. Uh, and also I didn't know about the X version, the, uh, the 40 mil full frame equivalent X version. And for some reason last week, I discovered this and I knew immediately I had to buy one. Two days after the email from my accountant, I lasted two days. So yeah, this is not a review of this camera because I've only had it a few days. But uh, I suppose first impressions wise, well, my first impressions of this camera were, were not good. I mean, this cost 900 pounds, but when I took it out of the box, it felt like the sort of camera that groups of girls used to take on nights out about 15 years ago before phone cameras were decent in low light. And uh, yeah, it felt like a 150 pound camera. Very plasticky, very lightweight, not particularly well constructed, I didn't think. And uh, on top of that, when I took the battery out, I mean, look, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. No, I've swallowed bigger painkillers. However, on reflection, I start to think that actually I, I don't mind those two things, the, uh, the perceived lack of build quality and the size of the battery, because the only thing I really care about with this camera is can it take amazing quality photos and fit in my pocket? And from the off what it's worth, it can fit in my pocket even with this little thumb grip that I've got. I, I know that lots of people that have this camera buy a thumb grip just so that you can hold it more easily with the one hand. And so 
so image quality wise, this is an APS-C sensor with, uh, as I say, a 40 mil full frame equivalent focal length. And the lens is sharp. It's ridiculously sharp. And not only that, there is image stabilization built into this, the performance of which has blown my mind a little bit. So for a couple of shots yesterday, I wanted to test uh, slowing the shutter speed down. And to do that, I used the inbuilt ND filter, which I'm very grateful for. And I was shooting between sort of half a second and a tenth of a second. And I wasn't being careful. Like I was holding my camera well away from my body. And I was assuming that at those shutter speeds, I wouldn't be getting a sharp shot. Because I mean, even the shutter shock, pressing a camera as light as this, I just thought there was no way that at those shutter speeds, yeah, that I'd get anything like sharp. However, literally every single photo I took at those shutter speeds is pin sharp, or as pin sharp as you could expect when you're shooting at f16, because there must be a fair amount of diffraction coming in there too. And it's every single photo. There wasn't a single one that isn't sharp. Now, as most of you know, I'd imagine, the best stabilization I have ever used is in this, my Lumix G9, which has phenomenal stabilization. I don't know if you can see the sensor moving there. It moves a lot and does a great job. But this, I mean, it's early days, but I think this might be just as, if not more, impressive. Uh, ergonomics, I mean, it's a tiny camera, so not the best, but to be honest, probably quite a lot better than what I was expecting. And that's in large part because the screen is really responsive. Uh, it's touch to focus, which works great, and you can do all kinds of other things touching the screen. I think it's pretty good. Uh, I also thought I was really gonna miss having a viewfinder, but actually the screen is plenty good enough to shoot in bright sunshine. And I think there were some instances yesterday where using the screen only helped me to kind of think about maneuvering the camera around in a way that I don't always think when I'm used to using a viewfinder, almost like a bit of a crutch in bright sunshine. So for example, here is a photo of a lady sat on a step looking at a phone, but it works so much better raising the camera so that the phone is out of the shadow. And I don't know if I would have thought of that if I was using a viewfinder. And on top of that, to be honest, if this camera did have a viewfinder, given its size, it would be tiny. And uh, well, the small viewfinders I've, I've never found worth their salt, really. Worth their salt? Is that a phrase? Now, in practical terms with this battery, it's only good for about 200 shots, which probably doesn't shock you. Um, I didn't find that to be too much of a problem because I do have a spare, I bought a spare, and I also took my power bank out with me. So when I sat down for a coffee, I, um, I just charged the camera through USB, which I think worked pretty well. And again, if I had to choose between having a big battery capacity and this camera being genuinely pocketable, then I would always choose pocketable because that is what it's for. If I just wanna grab this to go on a family walk or something, the chances are I'm not gonna be taking 200 plus shots. So this battery is fine for most uses, I think. Uh, so yeah, I imagine at some point in the future, I will make a more detailed video about my thoughts on this camera. But so far, I'm very impressed. And I am pleased, even in the circumstances, that I bought it. Because um, it's a very impressive piece of kit, even if it doesn't necessarily feel like it. Actually, one other notable thing, just quickly. Um, there is a really good macro mode on this camera. Um, could take a photo of the battery, maybe. So yeah, I was impressed with that, but as I say, the main thing, genuinely pocketable, even in really tight shorts. Now, inevitably, some of you watching will probably think, well, why don't you just use your phone as opposed to this? I mean, it seems a bit ridiculous. And I do understand that. Uh, this has a much bigger sensor. It doesn't do anything stupid with computational photography, and the focal length is much more to my, um, my preference really, which is why I've not been interested in cameras like this before, because typically I've only known them to be uh, sort of 28 mil, that kind of focal length, which, which doesn't massively interest me. 40 mil on the other hand is pretty much my favorite focal length, somewhere between that and 50. So yeah, for me at least, this is a much more intriguing option than shooting on my phone. I mean, obviously I'll still always have my phone on me. So if I do need anything wider, I can use my phone, but I'll much prefer to shoot on this, I think. Okay, I have no idea if this video has had any structure whatsoever, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed it and uh, say goodbye to new camera content on this channel for a while, he says. Also, a big thank you to the sponsor of this week's video, Squarespace. And I shall be adding some photos taken on this camera 
to my Squarespace website very soon, I should imagine. Uh, now, if you're a photographer or just somebody who wants to showcase their work online, Squarespace is a fantastic solution to do so. There are so many templates to choose from to make your website look exactly how you want it to. And adding content, whether it's text or images or embedding video, it couldn't be simpler. And I've been doing it for years. I've not needed to know a single line of code. There's lots of drag and drop. It's seamless, it's intuitive, it's brilliant. Yeah, for example, the other week, I spent about 20 minutes building a page on my website all about the Antarctica 2024 trip. Still places available if you're interested. And it was super quick and easy didn't take me any time at all. And that's all thanks to Squarespace. So if you've got images that you want to show people online on a website that you control entirely, then definitely check out Squarespace. Uh, and you can get a free trial by going to squarespace.com. And after that, if you'd like to make a purchase, just go to squarespace.com forward slash James and you'll get 10% off of your first purchase. So yes, a big thank you to them uh, and a big thank you to you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and uh, you'll see lots of content with this camera and of course my much bigger camera and actually probably still my my gx1 as well because this is just a, a good bit of fun but yeah probably not any other cameras that i own uh for the for the foreseeable this is not a gear channel i feel like i can still just about say that with a straight face oh also not camera related check out this knife that my my friend made me looks very cool doesn't it i thought i'd be taking that on camping trips and stuff but to be honest so far it's mostly been used to uh open boxes that have cameras in them. See you next week.